Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought we would make this cute little flip-flop card and we'll be using a brand new stamp set from Art Impressions. This is called the Harvest Together Set. And you can see all these cute little fall images that you get. I'm going to be using that little girl scarecrow today, the birdhouse, and those two little birds. We'll also be using a sentiment as well. But you also get that cute little boy scarecrow there. So for paper, I'll be using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And we're going to be doing our coloring today using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. And I'm going to start off with mustard. And I'll color the insides of these uh, sunflowers and that little flower there as well. Then I'm going to switch to the sand color. So I'm starting off with that lighter color, going to the sand color, and then I'll add a bit of that mid-brown right around the edges. So I'm just going to add all three of my colors at the same time, and then I'll use that Zig Blender Pen to do some blending. You could also use your lighter markers to do blending as well, so you don't have to use the Zig Blender. You could go to your lightest marker and do that blending. Now, once I did the centers, I did come in with some yellow, and then I'm using that Deep Vermilion. That's another one of those brand new colors. I will list that brand new Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pen set down below. It's a 30-piece set, and a lot of the colors I'll be using today are from that set. So there's a lot of smoky colors. This pretty uh, vermilion uh, is part of that collection as well. So as we go along, you'll see some of these really beautiful colors. So again, I'm adding that yellow, a little bit of that deep vermilion right around the center of the flower, and then I'll just use that blender pen to blend that right out. And to clean off your Zig blender pen, you just want to scribble it on your scrap paper. And once it goes clear, you know you're good to change to your next color. And you can see there that I did use a little bit of that yellow marker to do some blending there. I wanted to add a little bit more yellow, so I just used that yellow marker to blend my colors a little bit. So now, using that same deep vermilion, I'm going to do the apples in this little basket. And I'll try to keep some area of these very light for a little bit of reflection on those apples. And where they kind of come up against each other, I'll add a few little shadows here and there. So I colored in the rest of those off camera. And now I'm going to color in this little shoe. Going back to that mustard color. And I'm just going to add a bit of that mid-brown. And I'll blend it up, keeping the top of the shoes the lightest. So now let's go back to that mustard color and color in this little basket. And here I'll keep the colors kind of on each side and then bring it in. You could certainly add some extra shadows in here if you want to, kind of on the crisscross section of the basket. But I'm going to try to keep my coloring fairly simple here today. So now I'm going back to that same color for the post on my birdhouse. And I'll add that mid-brown just to one side here. And then I'll pull it over. Now for the top of the birdhouse, I'm using those same two colors. And I'll keep it lightest up towards the peak of that birdhouse. And then I'm just adding some mid-brown right in, in the opening there, just to one side and then pulling it over, just to give a little reflection there. Now again, I've got the smoky teal. This is again from that new Zig set. And I know I've mentioned it in other videos, but I did do a swatching of these brand new colors. If you want to check that out, it is on my blog. You can just uh, type in the Zig new colors and it'll come right up. And that will show you, uh, I, again, I did swatch out all the colors and then I did a part two to that where I used many of the new colors in a floral card. But you'll see today here that I'm going to use quite a few of these colors. They really lend themselves well to this fall theme that I'm doing. And I just think that the colors are just so soft. They're very subtle. They're not too bright. And they blend really well together. 
So again, two more new colors, the Plum Gray and the Plum Mist. And these two will blend together really well. You, I'm going to start with that lighter plum color and I'm putting this on the hat. So I'll keep the brim of the hat right up underneath there, the darkest, and then kind of bring that up towards the top to keep that top area lighter. And for the hands, I'm going back to that um, mustard color and a little bit of yellow. And then with smoky yellow and dark yellow, I'm going to do the leaves. And again, these are two brand new colors. And then I'm going to add the evergreen and that'll just give a little shadow right down the center of these leaves. And you can keep adding more color if you want to add more shadowing. And you don't necessarily have to use more than one color. You could just use one color of your marker and then just keep blending it out and adding more layers of that same color. So you don't always have to use multiple marker colors. But in this case, I thought these blended together really well, so I decided to use these three colors. And here again, you can see I'm adding a bit more shadowing there. And then I thought for the birdhouse, it would be really pretty to bring in that plum color here, right at the bottom. So I've got the teal and the plum. Again, just going for a really pretty fall color palette here. Just a really soft color palette. So none of my colors here will be super bright, but they will give you that feeling of fall. So I'm going to just kind of keep the shadow sort of up underneath that teal blue color and then pull it down a little bit here. I'm using that same color to finish off the roof there. And then I'll use the shadow pink, another new color on the cheeks. And then I'm going to come in with that mustard color right up underneath the hat. And here I'll stay with that mustard color and just add a few more shadows. So here you can see I'm not adding another color. Just going to use that color to add a few more shadows. So let's go back to that deep vermilion and just color in the little patch on her hat. And keep in mind that you could add a lot more detail to these images if you like. You could add some stripes to her hat or a little plaid to her apron there. So whatever you want to do here, you could add some more details. Just use a permanent pen or your gel pen. And then make sure you set that aside to dry if you do use the gel pen because they can be a little bit wet sometimes. So now I'm using warm gray number three. Again, another new color from that zig set. And I'm going to add a few shadows here. So I'll keep this mostly white. But I don't want it to be too bright. So I did add a little bit extra gray here just to make sure it wasn't too, too bright because the other colors are kind of muted and I wanted to stay in that theme. I'll just finish up the little patch here on her outfit and add a little detail to the shoes. And then I'm grabbing the orange for the beaks on the birds and I'll be using light gray and dark gray to color these in. Now I'm not using black here because sometimes 
I just feel like that's too dark and I want to keep them kind of whimsical and kind of cute. So I don't want to go too, too dark here. That's why I chose the two colors of gray. I did the other bird the exact same way. And now I've got my white gel pen and I'm going to add some highlights. So this is a great way to add highlights. If you weren't sure your coloring was just perfect, just come in with your white gel pen and add a few highlights here and there and it'll just make everything pop out a little bit more. And I always find this little touch with the white gel pen just a fun little process. It just kind of perks everything up a little bit here. So let's create our card base. I've got some craft card stock that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches and I'm scoring that at five and a half inches. Then I'm going to put a little score mark right up at the top there at two and three quarters inch and I'll flip the card over and put a second little score mark there. So now I've got my rectangle A2 double stitch dies from Art Impressions. I'm grabbing that second largest one and I've got some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'll run this through two times. So we'll end up with two stitch panels in the white. And I've placed that on a little bit of an angle to run it through my die cutting machine. It just makes it a lot easier to run that through. So these panels will both for right now, we'll sit on the inside of our card. So let's decorate these a little bit. I'm going to grab this stencil from Lawn Fawn. This is a Sunray background stencil. And I've placed it on my Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station. And I'll place some magnets around here just to hold it in place. I think I got a little carried away with the magnets, but <laughs> I'm going to just hold that down. And then for ink, I'm using the Scattered Straw Distress Oxide Ink from Tim Holtz. And what I'm going to do here is use my Hero Arts blending brush, and I'll just apply a nice coating of this on all of these rays. That's just to get started here. And you do kind of want to work in the direction of the ray, just so that your stencil doesn't move around on you or pop up. So I'm just kind of trying to brush in one direction here. Now I'll grab the mustard seed, Distress Oxide, and I'm going to go up from that center mark, kind of out, kind of making like an arch of that color, about three quarters of the way up. And then I'll grab the Crackling Campfire, again starting at that bottom center there, and then just add a little bit of that color, just maybe about a quarter of the way up here. Then what I want to do is blend these together. So I'm just going back to that brush and I'll just start blending these colors together. Just kind of pulling those colors right up towards the top, keeping the top of the rays the lightest. Now I didn't want to leave those bright white stripes. So I'm going back to the scattered straw, which is the lightest color that we started with first. And really with very little ink on my brush, I'm really trying to use what was already on the brush. Um, I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. So I'll, again, I'm not putting much ink on the brush here. I just want to eliminate that white. Again, I don't want too much of that bright white on the card. So I'll blend that out. And now I'm using my Distress Sprayer, which just has water in it, and a small paintbrush. And I'm going to spatter this background. And that's going to give us a really pretty look in that, in that sky. So once I've spattered that entire background, I'm going to use a dry paper towel and I'll just blot up any of that water. And again, that will give us that pretty spattered effect. Now I did the exact same thing for that second panel. So I did this two times. Now I'm also grabbing the metallic accents. These are some beautiful metallic watercolor paints. And I will list all the products I'm using today uh, down below and also on my blog. And if, there, if these particular products aren't available, I'll list something similar for you. So I'm grabbing that really bright gold. I'm squeezing a little bit of water down in there with the Distress Sprayer. And then I'm going to go ahead and spatter this. And this just added so much. It's such a beautiful sparkle to the background here. And again, I did that second panel the exact same way. So I've got two of those done. Let's set those aside to dry. 
Now let's go back to the card base. I'm folding this in half at that five and a half inch mark. And now we want to do some die cutting so we can create that flip flop mechanism here. So I want to find the center, which is where we place those two score marks. Now what I'm going to do here is draw a pencil line. I normally don't, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I normally just go by those score marks at the top and the bottom, but it's certainly easy to erase this if we need to. So now I've got a rectangle from the Hero Arts Infinity Rectangle Die Set, and I've grabbed this one here that will fit right inside this panel, leaving about a half inch at the top and a half inch at the bottom. So I'm centering it. I'm centering it on that pencil mark. Now I'm just making sure it's nice and straight. So I'm using my T square just to make sure that's lined up nice and straight before I run this through the die cutting machine. So now what I want to do is tape this down really well so it doesn't move. And then we're going to be cutting from that pencil line to the right hand side, just half of this rectangle. So I want to place my plate on the portion that we want to cut. So I've got this in my die cutting machine and I'm going to place that top plate right along that pencil line. And we're cutting that right side of the rectangle only. So let me remove that tape and I can show you that we've just cut that right hand half of that rectangle. You can see that there. So now I can go ahead and erase that pencil line. And now what I want to do is just connect that score line that I started earlier right up to that cut line. So I'm going from the two and three quarters up to the first cut line and then from the bottom up to that second cut line. So that'll just score that area. So now again, we've got the card folded in half. And then we want to fold this panel back on itself. That'll create like a Z fold. And that's going to create the little flip flop mechanism that we need. Now for this particular card, and you could also turn it the other way as well if you want, had a different design in mind. Now what I want to show you here is we've got these two panels and this one here needs to be cut to adjust for that little flip flop mechanism. Now I have done other videos where I do kind of a shortcut method to this, but for this video, I need that pretty sun rays background on that rectangle area. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So what I've done is centered that background on the front inside of the card. And now I'm going to mark this rectangle right at the half point. So I've just placed it on my glass mat here and I'm just finding that center point at the top and the bottom, and I'm marking that with a Sharpie. So now I've placed that background, I've centered it on the inside of my card. I taped it down with a little bit of purple tape, just while I'm lining this up here. And then I'm going to center that, and I want equal distance at the top and the bottom, and I want it centered on this panel. And I'm using that score line right above it to find the center. So I've got those score lines on that crafts cardstock that I'm also using to line this up. And you can see that there. So now I want to do the same thing here. I want to go to that halfway point, which is marked right on the die there. So I'm following the, those little Sharpie marks on the die. I'm placing that plate right along those marks. And I'm only going to cut one half of this again. Now, in this case, I can go ahead and cut these two pieces apart. So if it didn't cut all the way, I'm just going to trim that right off here. I'm going to use my cutter. And that little arrow there tells you exactly where you are, where your blade is on your cutter. So I'm just going to slide that down right up to that other cut line and cut away these two pieces. And if you didn't get any little areas, I'm just grabbing my scissors there just to separate everything. So now I've got these two pieces for the front inside of the card. You can see that there. 
So what I want to do is take this first piece here and I can go ahead and glue that down. I'm using my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. I'll make sure I put plenty of glue on that. And then I'm lining it up with that fold line, sliding it right into place, making sure it's lined up at the top and the bottom as well. I'm just using that other piece just to make sure I have it lined up really well. And then I can go ahead and glue that down. Now I can do the same thing for this other piece. So it's kind of like a puzzle. I'm just going to slide that right back into place here and glue that down. All right, now you can see that's our little flip-flop mechanism, and now we have it all aligned with that beautiful sun rays background. And for this piece here, all I have to do is glue this one down on the other side. Just making sure I line it up top and bottom so it lines up with the one on the left. So I'm centering it on that panel. So now you'll see that when the card is closed, those sun rays line up perfectly. So let's go ahead and grab another couple of dies from the Art Impressions Journal Template Die Set. This is a beautiful set that creates a journal with pages and a cover, but there are lots of little elements in this set and you get this beautiful little frame. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that frame. I went ahead and die cut that four times, I believe, out of some out of that same craft cardstock and I'm going to glue these together. And that's going to give us a nice thick frame for the front of our card. So again, I'm just using that Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive to glue these together. And you can see that gives us almost like a chipboard frame. So now I've got the Ground Espresso Distress Oxide Ink and a small blending brush. I'm just gonna go around the edges of this and add a little bit of a shadow here. And I'll go around the inside of that panel as well. I'm just using that smaller brush just to keep it right on the edges. You could certainly use a foam applicator tool here or a little sponge dauber as well. So now I want to center that frame and it's going to sit right on that flip-flop mechanism that we've got there. But let's set that aside while we do the sentiment for the inside of the card. So I'm going back to that journal template die set and I'm grabbing these three dies. I did decide to use this sentiment here that says, so kindness, harvest friendship. And I'm going to use that little oval die, and then we'll use this kind of decorative one with the craft cardstock. So that oval will sit right in the center of that. And I set that other die aside for now. We won't be using that one today. Now I'm going to add a little bit of that Distress Oxide ink around the edges again. And then I'll just glue these two together. So now I've gone ahead off camera and I stamped that birdhouse again. And all I wanted from that were these little flowers. So I went ahead and grabbed those and cut those out with my detailed scissors. I just needed a few extra flowers for one of our little birds. And I'll show you that here in a second. So now I've got the coordinating dies. This set does come with the coordinating dies. And I'll run those through the die cutting machine, just putting a little scrap paper on there just to make sure that everything's protected while it's running through the machine here. So now let's go ahead and do some assembly here. So I'm going to have this little scarecrow right behind this frame. And again, that's why I wanted to make sure that I took the time to die cut that sun ray out so that it would be behind this frame. Now again, there are some simpler ways to do these flip flops, but with this one, I wanted that sun ray behind her. So I, that's why I did it this way, cutting that panel the way that I did there. So now I've got some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. I'm just putting a little right around the inner edge of that frame, just to make sure I don't get any on the inside of this card. And I'm just going to line that up with that score line, making sure it's centered. And again, just making sure no glue 
popped out the back side there. I don't want my card to get stuck closed here. So I've got my little birdhouse. I'll go ahead and place that down. That's off the page a little bit there, so we'll just trim away that excess with our scissors. And then I've got this little bird that's flying in. I'm going to put a little foam mounting tape on this bird and then I'll pop it up right over that birdhouse. Now these little extra flowers that I stamped and cut out, I'm going to put on the front left hand corner of the card. Again, I just wanted a little place for that other bird to sit. I just didn't want him to look like he was just kind of floating out there. So I glued down one of these and then popped up the other one. And then I'll just glue down that bird right behind there. So now for the sentiment, I want to make sure that it's right behind that window and I want to center this. So what I'm doing is I'm placing it on the center of that flip-flop mechanism and I'm going to put some glue on it. I've just put it face down there. And then what I can do is make sure it's centered and then I'll close my card and pick that up. And we know then it will be exactly where we want it to be. It'll be tucked right behind that mechanism. So I'll just spend a second here just making sure it's nice and straight. And then I've got that other little tiny flower and I'll just glue that down here right above the sentiment. And the next thing I'll do is add some Nuvo crystal drops and this is the white blizzard which is a really pretty sparkly effect. So it'll give it some nice interest and dimension here. I also want to mention that there's other new products that are available. I did a card on the Mousy Christmas set that was just recently came out and on the Halloween Peekaboo set. So I can link to those down below for you and also on my blog if you're interested in that. And also all the products are linked as well. So let's take a closer look at this finished flip-flop card and you can just see how cute these little images are. And I do really like this pretty fall palette of colors. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.